All right, guys, in today's video, I'm gonna show you all how to tune your e-bike for more power, more acceleration, and more top speed. This is my DIY enduro style e-bike, and I have a 72 volt battery, QS205 motor, and a far driver motor controller. So I'm gonna be showing you all setup for those components, but most of the concepts I'm gonna talk about in this video are gonna be relevant for pretty much any e-bike using a brushless motor. I'm gonna go ahead and cut to some riding footage, and we'll jump into the explanation, and I'll show you all my BMS configuration, my controller configuration, and explain some of the nuances with power levels in these kind of e-bikes. The first thing that we're gonna to need to configure is gonna be our BMS settings. This is gonna control the total amount of kilowatts or power that flows through the e-bike system. The BMS is gonna act as your battery savior if the controller tries to pull more power than your battery can give. So you wanna have these values set right so that your controller can run where you want it, but it won't pull more amps than your battery can handle and cause your battery to shut down or cause the BMS to shut your battery down. Some people run their battery with no BMS and it will work perfectly fine, but I like to run one because there's really no reason not to and it can safeguard you in case of an unexpected electrical event like a short. The two most important settings in the BMS configuration is going to be your discharge amperage and your battery's voltage. The voltage is going to control how fast your motor can potentially spin and your amperage is going to control how much torque your motor can potentially have. These two numbers multiplied together is going to create kilowatts, which is just a basic measurement of how much power your e-bike has. So the more kilowatts, the more powerful the bike is going to feel. Due to gear ratios and different motor types, it isn't always the same between bikes. So a 15 kilowatt bike with a hub motor is going to feel different than a 15 kilowatt bike with a mid-drive motor mostly because the mid-drive motor is going to have a gear ratio on its side. So you can see I have my discharge overcurrent protect set to 300 amps. This is a little bit below my peak burst discharge of my battery, but it's a bit above how much I'm pulling on the controller. So it's safe because my controller will never pull more than that, causing it to shut down. And I can still go past that uh, safely with my battery cells. And I also have my pack type set to lithium ion. And you can see that my series connections is set to 20 series connections or 72 volts nominal. And my capacity is set to 30 amp hours. These settings will vary between different batteries, but it's pretty straightforward. The rest of the MBMS parameters can be set to your liking, such as your temperature cutoffs, um, different charge cutoffs and all that stuff. That's gonna really be up to you. But the big two things to keep in mind is gonna be your amperage, your voltage, and uh, also you wanna make sure that your temps are set because you don't wanna overheat your battery. Your BMS really can save you if you're running your battery super hard and it happens to overheat. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions about BMS configuration. I can gladly do a video explaining just that. I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the controller configuration. This is gonna be the most detailed portion of the video. I'm gonna go through how to set up the power in the controller and then how to set up some of the parameters that will make the bike feel different. And that's gonna be the real tuning aspect of electric bikes. You can tune in how your throttle response feels, how your flux weakening works, and how your e-braking ramps in. That is one really good thing about the far driver controllers is they are super customizable compared to Sabatons or some of the other brands. I'm sure some of the nicer controllers have even more configuration settings, but the far driver has a good bit for its price point. And I hope I can get my hands on some of those nicer controllers like the KO motor or the BAC or nuclear controllers because those look really cool. So once you get into the far driver app, you're going to go ahead and go to this page, which is going to be your Bluetooth connection page. You're gonna hit scan while your bike is on and you will see this name pop up or something similar. Go ahead and click connect to that. And once you're connected, you'll be able to run your auto learn. I featured this in my first video on the far driver controllers. So you can just go back to that video if you wanna see how to do the auto learn procedure. But once you do that, it'll set a couple of values. After the auto learn procedure, you can go ahead and move into the configuration page. You're gonna to wanna to hit the expert new BLE on this page and that's gonna give you access to all of the settings that you can change. I'll go ahead and go in order, but angle detect is going to be determined by the auto learn. Phase offset will also be determined by the auto learn. Motor direction will be either one or zero. So if you do the auto learn and your motor spins backwards, you can go ahead and change the motor direction from either one to zero or zero to one based off what it was. Rate of voltage will be set based on which controller you buy. Next, we have the max speed. You're gonna to wanna to max this out if you want your bike to be capable of the max speed. Next parameter I set is the max line current. So I have mine currently set to 200 amps. So 200 amps at 72 volts is about 14.5 kilowatts. So that's what I have mine set to right now. There's still room to turn it up. As you saw in my BMS, it was at 300 amps in there, but I've really just been liking out of this. It's been plenty powerful, so I haven't changed it. The next is gonna be your throttle response options. There are three different options, but line is gonna be the most linear. I think there's like eco and sport and I have not used either of those, but you should go ahead and try them and see if you like them. I have my weak character set to fast 
And I think what this does is control how fast the flux weakening comes into effect. Um, I have not experimented with the different settings. I set it to fast and it felt good, so I left it there. To quickly explain flux weakening, it is basically a way for the controller to spin the motor faster. It compromises torque for higher speed. If you have flux weakening set up, the bike is gonna be able to go a little bit faster than it would be able to do with just the battery's voltage. To be honest, it's super complicated and I don't totally understand it, but it is nice to have it set up because your bike will reach a faster top speed. The throttle step setting is gonna control how fast your throttle response is. So a lower value, I believe, will have a slower throttle response when you pull on your throttle, and a higher value is gonna have a faster throttle response. The max value is 224 and that's what I have mine set to. Throttle low is going to be basically where the bottom of your throttle is. So it'll set this in the auto learn, I believe, but it's always too high. So you'll notice that you'll have a little bit of dead zone when you pull on the throttle. So what I recommend doing is just going ahead and lowering this number down until either the bike starts to move on its own or you see that the value in the other page, I'll show you right here. So there's this value here that shows uh, in this sort of telemetry page while it's connected to the bike. And when your throttle is just resting, you'll see what voltage that reports. So basically just set the throttle low super close to that, but a little bit above. And that way you'll have basically no dead zone on your throttle. Temp sensor, I have this set to four CACU. This is the protocol for the hub motors temp sensor. So it's gonna be different depending on the motor you use, but for a QS motor, I believe this will always be the correct option. Pole pairs will likely be set to four after the auto learn. Uh, if you have a hub motor, you're gonna to wanna to change this to 16, or if you know your motor's pole pairs, then just go ahead and put that, mo that number in. I think for a mid-drive motor, it's four, and then for a hub motor, it's 16. Rated speed is maxed out. Rated power is, it's set to 5,000 watts. I don't, I think it's, but back speed is 100 RPM. So that basically controls how fast the motor will spin backwards. Max phase current is maxed out for this controller. So this is the 72530 controller. So it's capable of 530 amps of phase current. So that's set to max. Throttle acceleration step. It's the same as what I explained with throttle deceleration step. Uh, have that maxed out so that I control how fast it takes into action your, your twist of the throttle. Eco Excel coefficient doesn't matter because I'm never using eco mode, so I didn't change that. And I have weak response set to zero and release throttle set to zero. And my throttle high is 3.5 volts. I don't actually know if that's the correct voltage for my throttle because I can't test what my throttle voltage is wide open uh, because it's gonna speed the wheel up. So I've left that at 3.5. So that might mean there's a little bit of dead zone at the top of my throttle but I don't really notice it. Moving to ratios and speed, I have these all maxed out to 100. If you don't want your speed to be limited, then you can put it at 100. If you do want the speed to ramp out, then you can configure this how you want it. Ratios and gear is gonna control how much speed you have in your low, mid, and high speed. If you have a three-speed switch, I have mine wired to always be at high speed, so these do nothing on my setup. Energy regenerate is set to stop back current of 12 amps and a max back current of 20 amps and I have it set to 100% through the RPM range. Um, you can set this basically to ramp in your regen braking. I have it just set to 100 and, and these amp settings and it works perfect for me. I have a very heavy bike though, so if you have a lighter bike, it may be different and you may wanna experiment with sort of creating a smooth ramp in there for your braking. But for me, this kind of works perfectly to slow me down uh, at a rate that's comfortable because I don't have a variable um, switch for my region, so it just kind of goes on when I pull my brake, so this is a manageable amount of braking for me. Moving on to these, if you want your region to work, the brake setting right there needs to be set to zero, which is stop when ground. If you have a switch brake like mine, so it's just gonna be one of the two wire brakes. Then to make the brakes actually work, you need to go to the follow setting and set that to uh, electronic braking when brake. So that'll basically tell the controller to implement those regen settings that you set when your brake lever is pulled. I do not have a display on my bike, so I'm going to skip the display settings. I don't really think that a display is necessary if you have a phone holder and the app, but if you do want a display, um, it'll probably come with instructions for how to set this up. These are your protections. So this will basically protect your bike if your battery gets super low or super hot or if your motor gets hot. So you can set these to your liking, but I think these are just the default settings because they work fine for me. PID parameters. So I am not gonna advise you to change any of these parameters. These, according to the FAR driver documentation, which is kind of weirdly limited, um, these can cause issues 
if you set them to the wrong values. And since mine worked fine with these set up default, I'm gonna leave them set up the way that they are. But I'm sure there's forums out there where people discuss changing the PID values. I'm just very wary of burning up my MOSFETs because I killed two Sabatons and it was super expensive. So I really don't wanna mess with anything that could do that. And according to their documentation, it does have the potential to cause um, destruction of the controller or the motor. And then down here, you're gonna see these fixed parameters. So we will not be able to change any of these. Um, I don't even know what they really mean, but those are obviously just things that are hard coded into your controller. On the telemetry page, after you set up all these things, all of these values should be correct. So your pull pairs is gonna control how the RPM reads. So you gotta make sure your pull pairs is set correctly and your RPM is gonna read correctly. Um, the power should read the amount of watts that's going through your system. So you'll be able to know how many kilowatts you're making. Um, you'll have your MOSFET temperature, which is the temperature of the controller, and then the motor temperature if you set that um, back in the motor temperature settings. You'll be able to see your throttle voltage, and you'll also be able to see how much line current the system is pulling and how much phase current your controller is making. Once you have all of these settings dialed in, I guarantee you your bike is going to feel better than if you just left it with the default settings. All right. To share my setup and sort of the basics of setting up these controllers on e-bikes in the most concise way that I could. If you appreciated the video, please just subscribe. It would help me out a lot. And if you have any further questions, just leave them down in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them.